This is Cashology by FMBO, a podcast devoted to the art and science of managing your money. It's like school, but your only homework is living your best financial life. Class is now in session. What is a financial advisor exactly? What do they do? And should you be working with one? Those are some of the questions we'll be tackling today. Before we get started, keep in mind there's a financial advisor available for every budget and every financial situation. You don't have to have a ton of money to be working with one. So if we want professional help with our finances, how do we find a financial advisor that's right for us? That's the question for today. Welcome, and thanks for listening to the Cashology Podcast, hosted by your guide on the path to financial savvy, me, Julie Wyans. Today, I'd like to introduce you to our guest, Josh Huseman. Josh has been with FMBO for 13 years and is a director in our wealth management group. He works directly with clients daily on reaching their financial goals in our Illinois market. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. Good to be here. So I know this may seem a little off topic, but it'll come around in a minute. Trust me. I just want to give you a little test. Can you name three jobs that you're confident a robot can't do? You know, that's an interesting conversation, and I love icebreaker questions that make you think. And so I'll say a chef, because a robot really can't actually taste anything. Probably a comedian, because how would a robot know what's funny? And maybe a basketball player or someone in sports, because that wouldn't be fair. And I would maybe add one more, that a robot cannot solve an argument over which song should be next, verified by my family and smart speakers in our home. (laughs) I love those answers. Uh, I did notice, though, Josh, that you didn't say financial advisor, did you? Well, no, because truth be told, there are robot financial advisors, and maybe I can explain some of that. Well, okay, let's start from the beginning, because I think I need some fundamentals here. What exactly does a financial advisor do, Josh? Sure. I would say that simply put, a financial advisor helps you manage your money. And so they do financial planning, which we really like to think about are based on your goals. And so we're talking about identifying the goals, but then putting a plan in place to reach them. Surely they manage investments and help you choose what's appropriate. And they can also manage your overall wealth which is really not a term to be intimidated by, though. I was just about to say, the word wealth is definitely intimidating. I mean, do you have to already be wealthy in order to work with a financial advisor? No, not at all. In fact, I would say that everyone deserves to work with one if they choose. Now, there's definitely different types of financial advisors for people with different budgets or different needs. That's for sure. Okay, so you had mentioned earlier that there are robot financial advisors. I I had no idea. So it sounds like not all financial advisors are human. Can you explain that more? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's something that is industry jargon, I would say for sure. You've heard the term robo advisors, and they can definitely be a good choice for some people. But I'd say there's really three categories of financial advisors, robo advisors, online financial advisors, and then more the traditional financial advisors. Can you talk a little bit about each one and why I would go to one versus the other? Sure. So the way I think about it, a a robo-advisor is really a digital service. And this could be appropriate for more the do-it-yourself, the DIY person that has a lot of comfort doing things online. And so you would complete a survey, talk about your financial goals, but you're giving some of this up to the computer algorithms that are going to take that information and build out an investment plan for you. Surely the advantages of a robo-advisor are that they're low cost and good for achieving some pretty simple financial goals like long-term retirement planning. But again, it's probably those that are comfortable doing things online. And that's probably about as far as a robo-advisor could go. Then there's what I'd call the online financial advisors. And so this is a bit of a hybrid approach. So here you're going to do a lot of things online still, but you're going to be able to augment that with a human financial advisor. Maybe that's through emails or chats or phone calls, 
But the back end investment management services are still really going to be the same as the robo advice. And the advantage here, of course, is that it's kind of a medium level cost. And so, again, it's for those that I would say are comfortable with doing things online and comfortable in having a bit of a hands on approach or starting out in life. But, you know, you still want that person that's looking over your overall financial picture and an online ad- online financial advisor can do that for you. But then there's what I'd say is the, the old fashioned or the traditional financial advisor. And they're real people you meet with in person, just like a butcher or a hairstylist, someone that you might prefer to build a relationship with over time. So, of course, there's varying costs or minimum portfolio sizes here that might be required. And you might have to have a bit of a larger investment account to get signed up with a traditional financial advisor. But they can be a good choice for those, again, that prefer to deal with someone in person and maybe even to leave to the pros. Contrary to that do-it-yourself person, someone that wants to have the financial part of their life better left to the professionals. That's awesome, Josh. The analogy to a butcher makes a lot of sense because you can pick up, you know, meat at the grocery store, but sometimes you just want that personal connection. Get the right cut. (laughs) (laughs) Sure, yeah. So I'm really curious and I need you to tell me, what are we talking regarding charges? How, How does this work? How much will this cost for each of these advisors? Yeah, I can do that in general. Uh, Robo advisor is probably going to charge an annual fee or a percentage of the assets managed. And what I mean by that is it really depends on the size of your account. And so it's a percentage of the dollars that you have invested with that robo advisor. Now, again, just like I said, with the do it yourself person, uh, this is going to probably be the lowest cost available to you. Online financial advisors are going to charge more because there's people now that we're talking about, and they're gonna do some of the similar work from the investment side, but you're gonna have to pay for consultation and questions. And so you may have a slightly higher expense framework there. And then traditional advisors probably are gonna offer more flexibility when it comes to fees, but they might be more expensive. And they could do that in the form of a flat fee, an hourly rate, or again, probably a percentage of the assets that they're managing for you. And so, as I said before, I think a lot of it's based on your preferences and the experience that you're wanting. And and if I can use the analogy again of, you know, do it yourself, it's much less expensive to buy the paint and paint your own room and you know what your costs are there. And it's going to be more expensive to hire a professional to do that for you, but it's probably based on the experience and the outcome that you're looking for. That makes a lot of sense. And regarding painting a room, the room needs to be painted no matter what, right? So depending on where you go is your choice. So with financial advice, when do people do that? I mean, when do you know when you need to paint the room? When do you know when you need to reach a financial advisor? Sure. And and I'd say people are often prompted and they're prompted by a significant life change. So here we're talking about buying a house, starting a job, getting married, sometimes tragedy as well. And so all of these things affect your finances. And so what I'd say is you don't really want to wait for the prompting or the significant changes because you can start sooner. Yeah, when I think about it, a lot of people start planning uh, for retirement when they want to do some serious financial you know, investments and planning, right? Yeah, that's right. And and retirement planning is a word that's used all over the place. And, you know, I, I think it's it's simple to say that it's never too easy to start planning for retirement, planning for your future. But there's other financial goals that people can plan for as well. And I talked about some of those life changes. But, you know, it sounds cliche, but there's a famous proverb somewhere that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is today. And so, I've been in this business long enough to see the power of starting early, starting small. And what I would say is don't wait until you think you have, and I'm going to use air quotes here, even though we're on a podcast, but don't wait until you have wealth. Instead, engage an advisor, whichever kind that you think is best for you and begin mapping out a plan today. Well, Josh, you've definitely inspired me. I feel like I need to reach out and get a financial advisor myself. 
Listeners, if you also feel inspired by Josh, uh, find more info on financial advisors and you can get Josh's contact information on fmbo.com slash wealth. Thank you, Josh, for being our guest today. Yeah, my pleasure. I enjoyed it. And thank you everyone for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and keep an eye out for more Cashology episodes coming your way soon. Investment products are not FDIC insured, not a deposit or other obligation of the bank, not insured by any federal government agency, not guaranteed by the bank, may lose value. This podcast should not be copied, reproduced without permission. Information and statements within this podcast are subject to change without notice. Information and statements in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to constitute investment advice or recommendations. First National Bank of Omaha does not make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of any information or statements within this podcast.